Hello and welcome to this second set of videos on Math Placement Review. This one, this set of videos is going to be about, fra about fractions, ratios, and percents. So we're going to, again, this one's going to probably be about three videos, and this first one's going to be about fractions. So we're going to start with fractions. What exactly is a fraction? A fraction is a relationship between part and whole. All right, so we're going to keep it very simple. A fraction is a relationship between part and whole. Usually we, re we write them, of course, a over B. A is the part, which we call the numerator. B is the whole, which we call the denominator. screen a little bit. There we go. Two basic types of fractions. We have proper and improper. A proper fraction is where A is less than B. So the part has to be less than the whole to be proper. An improper fraction, then, is one where A is greater than or equal to B. The line under the greater than sign means greater than or equal to. And we'll talk a little bit about how to work with either of those. The key to remember with fractions fractions are rational numbers. That means we can do everything to them that I can do to other numbers. I can raise them to an exponent, I can multiply, divide, add, subtract, I can do everything with PEMDAS that I can do with whole numbers, I can do with fractions. Just takes a little bit of extra work. So fractions are still numbers. And like I said, we can do anything that we want to them. So we're going to start with adding and subtracting. In order to add or subtract with fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So what does that mean? Let's say you have 3 over 5 plus 2 over 7. So what does that equal? I can't just straight up add right now because my denominators aren't the same. 5 is not the same as 7, obviously. So I need to do something in order to get those denominators to equal each other. I have to think what number can divide into both 5 and 7. So I'm going to make a note of that. What number can divide evenly into 5 and 7? That's the question you have to ask yourself whenever you look for a common denominator. Most of the time, you can just multiply your two denominators together to give you what your common one's going to be. In this case, the first number that goes into, that can divide evenly into 5 and 7 is 35. So 5 times 7 is 35. And at the same time, 7 times 5. 
is 35. So that tells me what my common denominator is going to be. Common denominator, CD. So both of these have to now be out of 35. Well, what times 5 gives me 35? The answer is 7. Whatever I multiply to my denominator, I have to multiply to my numerator. 7 times 3 is 21. And now the same thing over here. I multiply the denominator by 5, I have to multiply the, t the numerator by 5. And I get 10. And that gives me 31 out of 35. Now once you have your answer, you have to ask yourself a couple questions. First, A. Is answer completely reduced? And in this case it is. There is not a number that will divide into both 31 and 35. They do not share a common factor. B. Is fraction proper? And this one is. Remember, proper fractions all the way up at the top here. A has to be less than B. And we know 31 is less than 35. So our fraction, our fraction is reduced and proper. We're done. All right, that's how you add, how you add and subtract fractions. Sub, subtraction works the exact same way. But we're gonna do one now where one of these, where these questions we're gonna answer with a no. So let's try 13 out of 14 plus 1 over 2. Well, what's my common denominator going to be? Well, the first number that goes even, that divides evenly into both 14 and 2 is 14. So this one here already has a 14. I can leave it alone. This one the one-half, I need to get that denominator to be 14. Well, 2 times 7 gives me 14, so I have to multiply top and bottom by 7. And that gives me 7 over 14. Now notice up at the top here, when I added them together, I kept the denominator as 35 and just added the numerators. That's how you add them. So I get 20 over 14. Now let's ask ourselves those questions. Is the answer completely reduced? And no, it's not. There is a number that's a common factor for both 20 and 14, and that's two. So I have to divide each of them by two. I get 10 over seven. That's completely reduced. Now, is this a proper fraction? And the answer is no. We can, this is an improper fraction. Remember the definition from before. The top here is greater than the bottom. That makes it improper. You can't really have 10 things out of 7. Now, this is where it's going to have to force you to think back. Think back to elementary school and doing long division. 7 divided by 10. 7 into 10, as I believe they called it. Well, 7 goes into 10 once. 1 times 7 is 7, and when we subtract them, we have 3. So we used to say 1 remainder 3. This is where that idea came from. It came from creating a mixed number. My mixed number for this is going to be 1. That comes from here. Then my fraction part is going to be 3 over 7. All right, so I'm going to repeat a little bit here. 
do 7 into 10. It goes one time evenly. And you have 3 left over. The remainder gives you your numerator. Slide over slightly. Keep the denominator. And that's how you add and subtract fractions. So this is a mixed number. It's got a whole number and a fraction. So let's talk about multiplying fractions. You do not need common denominators for anything beyond addition and subtraction. Multiplying fractions actually is pretty easy. It's top times top over bottom times bottom. It is that simple. Let's say we have 5 over 12 times 3 over 9. Well, first of all, this can reduce. We can reduce this down to one-third. 5 over 12 times 1 over 3. And this is where people have trouble with multiplying fractions. This is not the same as this. This is where you would cross multiply. This is multiplying fractions. They look similar, but the difference is, here's your my multiplication sign, here's my equal sign. If there's an equal sign, that's where you cross multiply. We'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, we're just going to worry about multiplying fractions. Like I said, top times top, bottom times bottom. 5 times 1 is 5. 12 times 3 is 36. I ask myself those same two questions. Reduced? Yes. Proper? Yes. So then I'm done. And finally, we're going to do dividing fractions. going to do 5 over 9 over 4 over 7. You might see a problem written like this. There are a lot of bars there. Which bar tells me what? This problem is the same as it written like this. 5 over 9 divided by 4 over 7. So the big bar tells me where my dividing sign goes. So how am I going to do this? The way I was taught in, uh, in middle school was what's called CCF. So it's for copy, change, flip. So here's what I do. I copy my first fraction just like it is, 5 over 9. I change my sign to multiplication. Now I flip my second. It 
technically this is called multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. I'm okay with calling it copy change flip. Now this is going to be the same thing as up here. Top times top over bottom times bottom. And again, the same two questions apply. Reduced, yes. Proper, yes. And that is how you do all the operations with fractions. Real quickly, even though I don't have any questions on it, let me give you uh, exponents. We'll call it fractions and powers. Let's say we have 3 over 5 squared. It's the same thing as 3 squared over 5 squared, which is 9 over 25. And again, the same questions. Reduced, yes. Proper, yes. And that's all you need to know about how to work with fractions. So, until the next video, I'm going to sign off. Thank you.